Well, good morning, fellow narrow gaugers. Here it is, a lovely January day. And what are we doing? We're working on the railroad some more. Uh, so here we are at uh, Bance, which is the uh, basically midpoint of the railroad. And uh, we put down some 304 crushed concrete because um, in a couple of days we're getting uh, several large concrete slabs, which used to be a um, truck scale. Uh, they decommissioned a the scale and they gave us the slab. So we're gonna lay them down here uh, in a row, about 80 feet of them. And uh, it is here that we hope to put the uh, bay window caboose because with the bay window caboose here at the central part of the railroad and if you're looking out the bay window you're looking you know you've got a pretty good view of the entire railroad that if at some point we wanted to put in a centralized dispatching office to dispatch trains from either end you know coming out of the siding or whatever uh we could do that so i think it's a great place for the caboose plus it's a very narrow strip of land that really isn't you know, usable for anything else since everything you see over here, the tank cart, everything, all this is our neighbor's property. So, you know, our property corner is down there. Uh, so we're actually renting this space right now to hope to get this stuff moved back over on our side. Uh, so uh, that also begs the question, well, what are we going to do with the tank car? And where are we going to put the tank? And good Lord. <laughs> The, the location for that tank has, we've had like six or seven different places where they're like, well, it would work good here, work good there. Um, still haven't figured that out completely yet. Um, but uh, one idea is to put it next to the tank car, next to the caboose here uh, on this strip on the concrete pads. Um, but we'll see if that's going to work out. So uh, speaking of the tank car, um, that brings up the question of, well, where are we going to get our water supply for the steam locomotive? And we did some work yesterday here to try to uh, alleviate that concern. So, this here is this 30-foot strip of land that we purchased that goes back another 150 feet or so. And um, there is a stream that runs down along the property line and actually touches up onto our property and uh, yesterday we came in here and uh, dug this back so basically right there's where the property line is so we just came in here and dug a bit of a retention pond on our side and um, which we can now put a uh, put a pump in there and pump water out of the pond then up the hill and down towards where the uh, where the tank car is going to set uh, so well the one idea is well you know if we put the tank car down there on those slabs then we could pump it up and then down the hill another idea is well what if we put the tank car at the top of the hill right here or, at, or any other side of this clump of trees uh, and then all we have to do is pump the water up to the tank car and then you could gravity feed and actually have quite a bit of head by the time you get down to the engine facility where you have pressurized water to fill the tanks. Yeah, that's a great idea. How do we get the tank car up here? <laughs> uh, you know, we could have a crane down there that can set it over on the pads, but how do you get it up top of the hill? Um, we may be able to take our two heavy duty trucks, set the tank on the trucks and then shove it up the hill that way and then just drive the forklift up here and then pick it off and then set it on a couple of uh, uh, supports. Um, that may be possible to do. Um, we'll see if we can actually do that or not. Uh, standard gauge tank car on two foot gauge trucks. Uh, <laughs> that ought to be fun. Um, but you know, we'll see what happens in the spring. Uh, so that is one idea, but at the very least, when the spring rains come, and we, well, we had a lot of water yesterday, a lot of rain yesterday, and uh, dug that out, and then we had a real good flow going through, actually still a good flow going through here. Now this, this creek just goes up on the top of the hill, there's an airport back there, and it, it's kind of the, the draining, the runoff from the, um, 
from all that land up there and it's pretty clear water coming down in here uh but the downside is that you get into august or september we've not had a lot of rain in a while this dries up uh which could pose a problem for us in our busy season where our water supply dries up well if that happens then you know plan b i could always bring water over in totes from from the well at home um other solutions uh including you know of course we have eight thousand gallons in the tank car we could have more water storage in totes maybe a couple other tanks so we'll see how our water supply goes through this upcoming summer of full operations and uh, get an idea of uh, what our water needs are when our water supply dries up and how much additional storage capacity we would need to add to get us through the summer months so do we need to get another tank car do we get a you know a couple of uh, 1500 gallon plastic tanks we'll just have to see um, as time goes on so let's say that we were able to get the tank car up here and set right here um, there's enough room here to put the tank car and still be within our uh, our property um, what would we do to make the water suitable for use in the locomotive now it's stream water so it has a lot of sediment in it it may i i did the ph on it it wasn't all that bad um wasn't awfully acidic um but you know you have to keep an eye on that the the dissolved solids should be fairly low because it is rainwater and it's just washing through the ground and it's picking up mainly sediment uh so the the tds number should be manageable there may be a little bit of, of uh you know vocs uh oils and all that in it uh, so what are we going to do in order to make the water uh suitable for us to use in a steam locomotive fortunately thank the you know thanks to youtube there are many many people out there uh homesteaders or people live off grid and those who have solved those problems on how to take water out of a creek and filter it and make it uh, drinkable. We're just gonna follow along. I've been watching, <laughs> every night I'll watch a couple of videos there about different ways of filtering, collecting water and what have you, dealing with it, uh, and how to do, um, you know, collect water from nature and, and to make it suitable for use. And if it's drinkable water, it's good enough for a steam locomotive. So, you know, with sediment filters, carbon block filters, you know, settling tanks, um, you know, various means and methods, we'll be able to handle the water uh, and make it uh, suitable for use for the locomotive. Um, the one thing I wish we had room for, and, you know, we really don't on our property, is to put in a hydraulic ram pump so that we could just pump water you know using uh using gravity up here into the tank and if we could set something like that up this tank would be full all the time all the tanks would be full and you know it would just continue to run 24 7. we don't really have that here doing it on our property because it's all we have is that little basin uh so we'll have to use a uh probably gas driven pump down there to pump it up into the tank well if that's all we got to do is is a gas driven pump to pump the water out of the uh, out of the basin up into the tanks and then let's say we gravity feed it from here you know all the way down and feed the rest of the site I mean that's you can't get much better than that because we're I mean this is pretty far downhill that's a six percent grade so that's a that's a long way down to where the locomotive would be fired up and we'd have quite a bit of uh, head pressure down there so so the more that I'm doing this video here, the more I'm convincing myself that we need to put the tank car up here is basically what's going on. My brain is thinking as I'm talking, which is usually what happens. Uh, so, so yeah, that's basically what's going on on the water side. Now, we've got another thing that we do here that's a little bit odd on the electricity side and uh, next part of the video, and we'll talk about that. All right, so... For those of you who have visited us before here, um, I don't know, you may not have noticed, but there's no wires coming to these buildings from the road. 
We're not tied into the national grid for electricity, yet we have electricity. So how do we do that? Well, if you can see up on top of the silver building are five 250 watt solar panels and a cable that runs over into the locomotive. And inside the locomotive here, we have a solar charge controller and we also have a inverter and a set of four um, lead acid uh, batteries or AGM batteries I should say. So uh, oh and for backup power we have a generator sitting right there. So we put this system in in 2011 of course, it's 10 years old now. The batteries are about dead. The, uh, the Midnight Classic is dead as well. It just, the relay just keeps tripping in it when you turn it on. Uh, solar panels are good, and the inverter is good. So, what I'm going to be doing here is upgrading the uh, solar power system to continue supplying our electricity needs here. Now, this was fine when it was new. The batteries would hold the power that you know charge during the day of course you're usually open here when it's sunny in the summer so we're not getting a lot of uh need for the batteries mostly just coming off the panels to the light and then keeping the batteries charged and then towards the end of the day we start using power out of the batteries and by the time it's time for me to go home in the evening you know the batteries are down some but then they charge up the next morning did great for a while but we went through all those cycles use up all the life of the batteries well, now we've got more than just the lights. We've got, well, there's going to be a lot more going on here with uh, power needs, a signal system, and a box car, and a caboose, and all that. It's going to all need power. So how are we going to do that using this system? Well, the inverter has enough capacity to provide power for everything we need to do. Uh, so I just have to upgrade that. Uh, put another charge controller in, and I'm thinking of going with uh, lithium batteries here instead of these. And I know the limitations of lithium that they don't like being cold and all that. So we're gonna we're gonna figure all that out. We'll talk about that in a later video. But all I wanted to do is explain this is the status of what we have set up now. I want to vastly improve this installation and uh, put it to a capacity where it provides all of our power needs here for the foreseeable future as well as having enough reserve capacity to, for doing nighttime events and stuff like that. Uh, because we don't want to tie into the grid. I don't want to spend the several thousand dollars to hook up. I don't want to have a monthly electric bill. I, why, do we have, why should we have a monthly electric bill when we've got the sun? It's a no-brainer. This is a nonprofit organization. We're not going to be making oodles of money here, hardly making enough to get by off the ticket revenues and all that. So we have to cut costs everywhere we can, and this is a great way of doing it. And it's tried and true technology. People use it all over the place. We've used it. We're just going to make this better. So uh, upcoming videos, we'll be talking more about the water system. Also, we're talking about solar. Uh, is this the most environmentally friendly steam railroad in the country? I don't know, but I sure as heck like not having to pay for utilities. So, talk to you later. Well, Jeff is up there working on the uh, grading for the second track. Uh, we're going to come off the switch right here with. Uh, we got a couple more trees left to get rid of. We're going to leave all the trees over there on the left. Uh, we have one behind the excavator to go, a couple on the others up on top of the hill. And then I'm over on this side uh, doing a little bit uh, a little bit of transit work and making sure that we're on the right grade for when we bring the concrete slabs in. Hey. Uh.